Good morning once again brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our daily devotions. And we are now down to the last verse of Psalm 23 and today would be the last also of this series. A very short series. So because Psalm 23 is just six verses long, that's why we have now come to the end of this series. So open your Bibles please to Psalm chapter 23 verse 6. We'll be looking into verse 6 only but let me read to you the passage, the entire passage once again this morning but we'll be focusing on verse 6 only open your bibles to psalm chapter 23 let me read it to you coming from the english standard version it says here the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And then verse 6, the last verse. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. May God bless the reading of His Holy Word. Again, verse 6 is the culmination or the conclusion of this psalm right here. And we find right here the, the amazing statement of King David himself. We find right here some significant truths that we are going to look into this morning. Let me start by quoting the first word that David says in verse 6. He says, Surely, surely. He did not say perhaps or he did not say maybe, goodness and mercy. But he is saying surely, meaning to say he was sure enough and he was confident enough and he was 100% certain that goodness and mercy shall follow him all the days of his life. Surely, my brothers and sisters in Christ, let me ask you this question. Are you as confident as King David? Are you as certain as King David when he claims that goodness and mercy will follow him all the days of his life? Sometimes in our lives when we are faced with a difficult crisis, our confidence in the Lord and our confidence towards his word is challenged in a way that we would somehow doubt about the goodness of God, doubt about the promises of God. But one thing we need to acknowledge is that God would never change and his promises would never change. And how he deals with us will be the same with how he, deal, he dealt with us in the past. And even we can always expect that God would continue to do his work in and through us. David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Now let me point out these two words that are being mentioned right here. He says, surely goodness. I look into the word goodness and according to the Hebrew word, from where it is derived, according to this original Hebrew word, it means welfare right or in other words if you're going to paraphrase verse 6 it says surely surely welfare and mercy or goodness and mercy or welfare in other words david was so certain david was so sure that god was after his own welfare wow i guess that's the responsibility of the shepherd right the shepherd would always look after the welfare of the sheep the welfare of his flock and this is one thing that we need to acknowledge as well God being our shepherd is looking after our own welfare. But mind us, let me be clear about this one. The way we view welfare is may not be the same of how God views welfare or of how God views goodness. Sometimes we, we think that if we are looking after the welfare of a person, we, we want what's best for him. We want what's only good for him. Good situations, good circumstances. But God, in His sovereignty, in His power, in His goodness, sometimes, yes, it's true that He would look after our own welfare, but the method He's going to use as He looks after our own welfare may not be the same method that we are expecting in our lives. Sometimes, He in incorporates factors like difficult situations, pain, suffering, crisis, even pandemic as His means of looking after our own welfare my brothers and sisters in christ again we can never understand the will of the, we can never understand the the ways of god we can never understand his wisdom we can never understand fully the the wisdom behind the things that are happening in our lives but the point is be rest assured 
be sure, surely, he is after our own welfare. And David was quite sure about it. In the life of King David, of course, when he was able to claim that goodness and mercy or welfare, that God or God, the Lord being shepherd, would look after his welfare, even though he was able to acknowledge this one, that one, God, uh, David, did not, he was not spared, right? He was not spared from going through difficult circumstances. He still continued to face foes, his enemies, difficult situations, and all those things. But yet, he was still able to declare and claim that the Lord was still after his welfare. It's the first word, surely goodness. Now, let's look at the second word, which is mercy. If you're going to look at it in the original Hebrew language, the word mercy means steadfast love. In other words, if you're going to paraphrase this one again, surely welfare and steadfast love shall follow me all the days of my life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God's steadfast love will always follow us all the days of our lives. Can I hear an amen from that? Even if you're just at home watching this video, God's steadfast love will always be after us, will always follow us all the days of our life. And mind us, it's not just any ordinary love. It's a steadfast kind of love. When you say steadfast, it never ceases. It never changes. It never grow. It, it does not grow weak. It, it does not slumber. It is always steadfast. And that is how great God's love for us being His people. And He would always show to us His steadfast love all the days of our lives. The point is, David was able to acknowledge that God being his shepherd was looking after his own welfare and was very concerned with, with David in a way that he would always be shown God's steadfast love for him. In our lives, if we do believe that God is our shepherd, then God would always look after our own welfare and he would always show us his steadfast love, even if we are going through difficult situations. Now let me ask you this question, my brothers and sisters in Christ. How have you been experiencing God's steadfast love in the past few days? I mean, each and every day when we wake up, we would always hear the news, the bad news of what's going around in our city. And sometimes we, we tend to question the, the steadfast love of God. Lord, I thought you loved me. I thought you loved us. Why is it that every day the situation here in our city is growing worse? My brothers and sisters in Christ, as I have said, we may not understand the will, we may not understand the wisdom behind the things that are happening around us, but God is surely accomplishing His purpose through this pandemic and through in and through our lives. We just simply need to have confidence in Him. We just simply need to believe that He is, after all, looking for our own welfare and He is trying to show us how steadfast His love is. David says in the last portion of this verse, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The, the the phrase house of the lord it it tries to tell us about the presence of god he david was trying to say and i will dwell in the presence of the lord all the days of my life life god is going or david was confident enough that god was looking after his welfare that god was showing to him his steadfast love and that in return because of the faithfulness of god he was as he was he's telling us right here that he's going to show God his faithfulness as well by being in the presence of the Lord all the days of his life. Now let me ask you this question, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Now that we are in lockdown, now that we are in crisis, how often are you in the presence of God? How often are you in the house of the Lord? How often are you in the presence of God? Sometimes when we are being battered by the problems around us, we forget to be in the presence of God, all because we are driven away by our, our worries or our anxieties. But my brothers and sisters in Christ, let me again remind you that there's no other safer place in this world but to be in the presence of God. There's no safer place in this world but to be in the presence of our God. Even though there's chaos around us, when we are in the presence of the Lord, we are safe and secure. Even if outwardly we are being, um, we are being attacked and we are being afflicted due to the circumstance around us, but inwardly we are being renewed, we are re being revitalized, we are being energized because we are in the presence of our God. 
my brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope that you would find time to be in the presence of the Lord. And not just for today because we are in this pandemic or tomorrow because perhaps we will still be in this pandemic, but for the rest of our lives. May it be that we would be in the presence of our Lord. I have remembered as I close this devotional, I remember one pastor who said, na, uh, I, I, would want, I, I don't want to go to heaven if God is not there. I don't want to go to heaven if God is not there. I guess he's right because we don't want to go to heaven just for the sake of heaven, just for the sake of the place. We are after the presence of God. So wherever God is, there should we go. But of course, that was an exaggeration of the fact that it is more important to be in the presence of God than to be wherever we are right now my brothers and sisters in christ let's find time to be in the presence of the lord and let's all declare and let's all claim that his goodness that he is after our welfare and that his steadfast love shall follow us all the rest of our all the days of our life let's pray father we thank you for this new day we thank you for this morning oh god we thank you for your message reminding us that you being our shepherd you're always after our welfare you're always looking into the welfare of your flock, of your people, O oh God. And we thank you, O oh God, for that assurance and that you're in the business of showing us your steadfast love. And right now, Lord God, help us to experience and to see your steadfast love despite of the difficulty that we are facing. Thank you also, Lord God, for we can always access into your presence. We can always access your presence each and every day of our lives, every moment of our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for your faithfulness to us. In return, Lord God, help us to be faithful to you by desiring to be in your presence each and every day of our lives as well. Lord, help us to have confidence in you even through this crisis. We thank you and we give you praise. Thank you that we can now come to the close of this mini-series in Psalm 23. I hope and pray that your people have learned a lot. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and Amen. That's all for today. See you again tomorrow for another verse or another series of our morning devotionals. That's all. Bye-bye. God bless.